Hi guys, uh, in today's video, I'll be discussing about uh, the longitudinal and transverse framing systems that you find on ships. Uh, these framing systems are part of the ship's construction uh, to counteract for the various forces that a ship experiences during its uh, life at sea as well as in port. So what are these forces and what are these stresses and strains have been discussed in my previous videos. You can find the links to those videos in the description section below. So you can watch those videos and get an idea of it. Uh, before I get into the framing systems, I'll quickly recap the forces and how they occur. So these forces are shearing forces and bending moments and uh, torsional forces, various stresses and strains. And uh, it is a result of uh, unequal loading on a ship uh, as you see in the picture here or uh, the stresses and strains may also develop during the dynamic movement of the vessel and how the uh, hydrodynamic forces of the sea around the ship interact with the ship's bottom and now these stresses and strains are uh, unfortunately unavoidable during the course of a ship now one might argue that uh, you can uh, load a ship to avoid hogging and uh, sagging and uh, of course i agree with that but even then sometimes it's unavoidable uh, to load the ship to avoid stresses and when a ship is out at sea it will definitely experience uh, some kind of hydrodynamic forces uh, from the surrounding sea and uh, it acts on the ship's structure so in today's video i'll be talking about uh, uh, how the ship is constructed in order to counteract for these forces and in that regard i will show you example of a container ship with a transverse framing and then i will show you a double uh, hull tanker uh, built with a longitudinal framing system and finally i'll show you a tugboat built with transverse frames so you can get an idea of different types of ships so one will be a dry cargo vessel like a container ship and then the wet cargo like a tanker and then of course one which is not a commercial vessel is a tugboat all right so let's get into it so uh, if the ship is uh, longer uh, than normally 70 meters and has depths, then the longitudinal forces uh, have a large role to play uh, on such ships. So that is why ships with a length of more than 70 meters are usually constructed in accordance with the longitudinal stiffening system. Now this means that the primary stiffening of the shell plating and the primary stiffening of the deck and bottom plating run in the forward and aft direction. That is what we call a longitudinal stiffening system. Now, if you don't know what stiffening is, again, please watch the video that I have made on stiffening stiffeners and the link to that video is in the description section below. Uh, you can get an idea of what stiffening is and what is involved in a stiffening process. But here, I'll just want to show you how the longitudinal construction system and how the transverse uh, ships are constructed in a transverse strengthening system to provide that strength to the ship that it can uh, absorb those stresses and strains that result as a as a, as a result of a loading uh, improper loading or uh, hydrodynamic forces now ships which are shorter than 70 meters uh, for example fishing vessels or tugboats are usually built in accordance with a transverse stiffening system and that is why i thought i'll show you an example of a tugboat today where you can see how the transverse stiffening system is inbuilt in a vessel construction so the decision of either longitudinal or transverse framing is also under influence of the ship. So if the parallel mid body of a ship is relatively long, for instances in ships for inland navigation and in barges, longitudinal stiffening is cheaper and easier also with shorter ships. All right, so if the ship is shorter than 65 meters, most of the times uh, uh, the, the classification society does not require a calculation for any kind of longitudinal stress. So in the next uh, few clips, I'll show you uh, the container vessels with transverse framing systems and I'll take you through each part of the transverse framing system. So this, as you see, is a cross section of a container ship and this is near the engine room. So this is near the aft part of the vessel and this has a lot of transverse frames as you can see in the picture. So if you see number one uh, as labeled in the picture is are the frames uh, and uh, number two are the ice strengthening frames. Number three are the web frames and number four are the deck beams. All right, uh, you can see number four uh, in the next slide. I'll show you the number four uh, in the next slides as well. Here you can see number six. The number six is actually center keels. They are also known as duct keels and they are the center keels that provide the strengthening as well. 
in this picture this is also the same container ship uh, and this is again a cross section again near the uh, engine room so here you can see number four number four are deck beams and you can see how they are running in a transverse fashion along the deck and this is providing that trans transverse uh, strength and strength transverse strength to the vessel uh, you can see they are all running horizontal and they are running transversely uh, so that's why they are transverse uh, deck beams as you can see in the picture uh, you can also see uh, number six here which are center keels uh, again number three is uh, showing you the web frames which are there uh, number four uh, I already discussed number five you can see are the deck girders you can see how the deck girders are running uh, they are running longitudinally all right so the deck girders are provided uh, longitudinally and the deck frame the the deck beams which are running transversely they are joined together to provide that strengthening mechanism and again number one is the frames number six i told you is the center keels and the duct keels that you can see here at the bottom so this was the uh, transverse framing in a container ship then i'll show you the double hull tanker system and uh, the double the double in the double hull tanker here you can see the longitudinal framing systems as you can see in the picture uh, if you can see number one uh, at the top there number one uh, is the shell plating there you can see the shell plating is there and number two is the longitudinal bulkhead so remember this is a transverse cross section uh, of a double hull tanker so number two is a longitudinal bulkhead because uh, what you see is a transverse cross section so if you see number two in, running in the four and up direction so it gives you an idea of what is four and up so number two is a longitudinal bulkhead uh, number three then you can see next to number three is a transverse bulkhead and that you can see is running transversely and because it's a transverse cross section you can see number three is in a transverse cross section transverse shape number two is the longitudinal uh, cross section and number four is the longitudinal bulkhead again uh, it's the second longitudinal bulkhead after number two uh, again to provide that uh, it, it actually breaks the transverse section and why it is done so is because uh, in a tanker uh, the if the transverse section is kept too long or it is kept without uh, the longitudinal frame in the middle then the liquids are free to slosh about especially if the cargo hold or if the tanks are partially filled uh, the more space they get to slosh about the liquids then free surface effect is created and that kind of reduces the ship's stability so to break that free sloshing about of partially filled compartments you have another longitudinal uh, bulkhead running in the middle of the compartment all right then uh, you have number five you have the lower hopper tanks if you can see number five you can see the lower hopper tanks again they're just below the number two longitudinal bulkhead is the lower hopper tanks and so is the tank top number six is the tank top so number six is providing the tank top and below the tank top of course you have double uh, double bottom tanks so number seven becomes the double bottom tanks and it is denoting the bottom of the ship but it's basically double bottom tanks uh, then uh, you have in number eight you have the side longitudinals if you can see number eight you have the side longitudinals running in the longitudinal direction number nine is the bottom frame so on your left side of the screen towards the bottom you can see the bottom frames and also the longitudinals are there in number nine number 10 is the inner bottom longitudinals uh, number 11 as you see if you go above just go upwards and the red color frames you can see number 11 is the bulkhead stiffeners so they are provided to provide some strengthening to the bulkheads uh, otherwise the bulkheads are not strengthened so if they provide those uh, at, at uh, intervals they provide those bulkhead stiffeners to provide strengthening to the bulkheads all right because sometimes uh, uh, because with the dynamic forces of the sea around the tanks as well as the liquid which is loaded in these tanks the pressure on these bulkheads is immensely high uh, you have no idea how high it is very high so to provide that strengthening we have to provide these uh, bulkhead stiffeners at regular intervals to strengthen that bulkhead uh, then you can see number 12 uh, number 12 can you see number 12 no so it probably we'll see it in the next diagram number 13 you can see number 13 is the tie beam or the cross tie what we call as the cross tie uh, number then we have number 16 and 17 at the bottom you can see they are the watertight floors and the plate floors then number 18 is also at the bottom side you can see they are the water side uh, watertight side girders uh, and what else number 22 and number 20 at the top number 20 is wing ballast tanks and number 22 is the cargo tanks all right uh, and then uh, in the next in the next diagram here you can see the other parts uh, of the same cross section and you can see here how number 20 is the wing ballast tanks again uh, number 14 is the strangers number 2 is the longitudinal bulkhead number 11 
is the bulkhead stiffener so you can see a different cross section this is actually a longitudinal cross section this time uh, so you can see number 22 is the cargo tank number four is a longitudinal bulkhead and this time you see it running longitudinal because it's a longitudinal cross section so number 21 again at the bottom is a double bottom tank number 12 are the stiffener with the brackets number 18 is the watertight side girder 16 is the watertight floor and 17 is the plate floor all right uh, next i will take you to the tugboat so this is the tugboat and uh, you can see how the different uh, strengthening systems are provided in a tugboat and I'll start from the top, right at the top. So number five is of course the mast. Number three is the port side funnel. Number six uh, is the deck house top. Then we have number four, we have starboard side funnel. Number one is the wheelhouse front windows. Number two is the wheelhouse rear windows. Then we have uh, number seven is the fore deck. Number nine is the forward bits. So if you go from the forward, I'll go from forward to aft now. Right? So I came from top to bottom. Now I'll go from forward to aft. Number 21, what you see is the bulwark uh, top rail. It's also called gunwale. Number 11 is the side bollard, which is the forward part of the side bollard. And number 10 is the location of the bow fender. Uh, then as you come back, number 31 is the bilge plating. And number 15 is the deck bracket. Number 17 is the transfers full floor. Number 12 is the build skill on the side you can see. And number 14 is side shell transfers frame. And number 16 is the build bracket. And if you go above, you can see number 29. Number 29 is the side bollard on the aft part of the vessel, of course. Number 25 is the deck beam. Number 27 is the location of the towing winch. Number 23 is the poop deck or uh, number 13 is the towing bits number 21 is the bulwark top rail or the gunwale again and number 19 is the stern fender all right i'll, I'll show you some more parts of the tug and uh, here you can see more clearly about the construction or the inner construction here so you can see if i again uh, start from the number 21 is you can see is the bulwark top rail or the gunwale Number 29 is the side bollard aft part. The number 23 becomes the poop deck or the aft deck. Sometimes we call it the working deck. Number 28 you can see is the steering gear flat, which is located right below the poop deck on most of the ships, of course. Number 20 is the stern roller for anchor handling. So you can see the anchor can uh, roll over the stern, uh, stern roller because the chains otherwise will chafe the ship's uh, structure. So this is provided specially for rolling of the anchor chain. Uh, number 19 you see is the stern fender to protect the stern uh, when it is going when the tugboat is going alongside the ship uh, to take the line number 22 right below it is the thrust nozzle or the thruster nozzle sometimes i mean tugboats have forward and aft bow thrusters so that is the thruster nozzle number 26 is the transverse bulkhead as you can see like i told you i'll show you the tugs with the transverse framings number 26 because they are smaller vessels they have transverse framing they need more of the transverse strength rather than the longitudinal strength uh, longer ships uh, longer than 70 meters they are the ones which needs longitudinal framing number 25 is a deck beam again uh, running across the vessel or the transversely across the vessel uh, finally uh, i'll show you number nine as you can see here is the forward bulwark with closed clock number eight is the forward bits number seven is the forward deck number six is the deck house top and number one again are the wheelhouse front windows number 24 at the bottom you can see is the rubbing bar and again that is to provide the uh, some kind of cushion to the forward part of the uh, tugboat number 11 uh, as you see is the side bollard forward number four five and three two all that i took you through all that so again uh, i'll take you at come at the bottom of the tugboat and you can see the bottom towards the middle uh, number 15 you can see is the deck bracket provided there and number 14 is the side shell transverse framing right below 14 is number 18 and in the 18 they are the stringers again running across the vessel to provide strengthen to the vessel uh, right after 18 is 16 uh, which is actually the bilge brackets and behind 16 is the bilge keel and number 17 is uh, what you see is the transverse full floor so they are running across transversely across the vessel's uh, breadth and finally number 31 at the back is the bilge plating 
So you can see that uh, this is how the smaller boards or the tugboats are constructed. They are provided with a lot of transverse strength. All the plates, all the strengthening systems are running transversely to provide that kind of uh, cushioning, that strengthening to for the vessel to be able to absorb those stresses. Whereas in longer ships that you saw, uh, you saw that uh, uh, framing was provided more in the longitudinal way. There were longitudinal bulkheads, longitudinal stiffeners, and that is for the vessel to be able to absorb those stresses more in the longitudinal direction to avoid the ships from breaking up into two pieces uh, but remember uh, longer vessels not only have longitudinal framing systems but they also have transverse framing systems because all ships uh, mostly of the commercial ships and um, they need both longitudinal and transverse framings it's just that the vessel as they get longer uh, more money or more plating or more strengthening is provided in the longitudinal direction as the ships get shorter uh, more construction or more strengthening is provided in the transverse as compared to the longitudinal framing so don't think that uh, uh, longer ships do not have transverse framing. They need to have transverse framing as well because they need to be able to absorb that stress as well. It's just that more focus is on the longitudinal framing system. So that's why I showed you or took you through the different parts of the ship construction. And um, in, in, in the future videos, I'll also show you what happens when a ship is ordered and uh, how the order is placed and how do they go about planning the construction of the ship. So you get a good idea. So if you are a mariner, you should know right from the point how a ship is ordered and how a ship is built uh, to the way uh, till the time you become a master you should be knowing all about a ship uh, and that is when you become a true master all right i'll leave you guys to it now and i'll see you soon with my next video keep watching guys keep studying hard and let me know what you think about these videos i look forward to your comments and feedback bye for now